We're talking about AWS Lambda layers today. This is an optional feature of AWS Lambda that allows you to manage your in-development function code independently of the slower changing code and resources that your Lambda code relies on. Like for example, the external PyPI or NPM packages that your Lambda imports. This improves code reuse across multiple functions. It's a better, cleaner way to manage your code dependencies and it reduces the overall size of your Lambda deployment packages. Since its introduction in November 2018, AWS Lambda Layers has become a popular feature among developers who prefer to leverage AWS Lambda for serverless computing. As you're about to see, layers can help to simplify the process of managing code and dependencies, and in all respects, they make it easier to develop and deploy serverless applications. Let's get into it. Okay, first, what is an AWS Lambda layer and what problem is it supposed to solve? In simple terms, it's a way to abstract away the ancillary code that makes your Lambda work, and it's also a way to share code across multiple Lambda functions. Layers give you a way to separate stable code that changes infrequently from the Lambda code that forms the basis of your cloud solution. For a Python Lambda, a typical use case would involve creating a layer to serve the pip installed packages inside your project's virtual environment. And we're going to take a look at exactly this use case right now. Let's say you have a project that uses two Lambda functions, and these two Lambdas depend substantially on the same sets of third-party code packages. An alternative to copying and pasting the exact same code base into each function would be to create a Lambda layer with the contents of the one common virtual environment and then attach this layer to each Lambda function. This makes for better code management and obviously it's more dry. As an added bonus, your Lambda source code will also become visible from inside the AWS Lambda console editor when you use layers. Okay, let's take a look at how to use an AWS Lambda layer in your Lambda function. First, you'll need to create a Lambda layer. I'm going to do this with Terraform, but you can use the AWS console if you prefer. In either case, you're performing the same basic steps. First, you create a distribution package and zip format containing your source code and any other resources that you want to share. Next, you create an AWS Lambda layer, and then finally you configure that layer, setting the runtime version, its permissions, etc. For today's demo, we're doing some light refactoring of this AWS OpenAI repo that I created for a chat GPT React video that I did last week. And by the way, I pasted a link to it in the video description down below. B02.2 of this project already has a Python Lambda that manages the request to the OpenAI API, but we can improve its overall design by moving all the Python site packages to a Lambda layer. And quasi-related, something else that I didn't really like about the original implementation is that the source code isn't visible from the AWS Lambda console editor because the distribution package is too big, but refactoring it with a layer will fix that issue as well. Last thing, I'm planning to make a video about Langchain, which is a convenient excuse for me to create another similar Lambda right now. It's basically going to do exactly the same thing that the current Lambda does, albeit using Langchain instead of calling the OpenAI API directly. So, once we're done refactoring, we'll have two Lambdas that are pretty similar in functionality, and both of these will be using a common Lambda layer. So, here's what I did to the code base. I created a Python virtual environment where I pip installed the complete collection of Python packages referenced by either of the two Python lambdas. Sidebar comment. In the original Lambda OpenAI function, <clears throat> I wrote a bunch of code to create custom data types in order to strongly type all the code and also to handle validations for the JSON inputs to the request. The new Langchain Lambda is going to need all this stuff as well, but I don't want to just copy the source code. So I moved all this code from the original Lambda into the layer refactored it into an actual Python package, and then pip installed it into the virtual environment. Slight digression, and I'm sorry about this, but apparently that was kind of an edge case for pip because it simply would not cooperate. For some reason, pip insists on always leaving my custom code in place and creating references to it. But that won't work in this case because we ultimately are going to need all of these packages to be physically located alongside each other in the same folder inside the layer. So as a workaround, I created a bash script that Terraform invokes to choreograph the steps for creating the final archive folder consisting of the virtual environment plus my one custom Python package. It's kind of a hack, but it works. And lastly, I created some unit tests so that I can make sure that all the Python functionality works before I even attempt to create the Lambda layer, or for that matter, attempt to build the Lambda into a REST API endpoint. Okay, moving right along. The bash script created this VENV virtual environment, 
then created the archive folder from the VEMV plus the common Python code, and then Terraform archived it into this compressed zip file. I'm going to put a copy of the zip file on my desktop right now and expand it so that you can see what the final folder structure is supposed to look like. I also pasted a link to AWS's technical guide for Lambda layers and the video description down below. The key thing to take note of is that the top level folder must be named Python in lowercase, and the complete path to the packages needs to be Python slash lib slash Python and whatever your runtime version is slash site packages. Note that most but not all of that path is the boilerplate path created by the command line tool virtual env. If you don't want to go the Terraform route for this, by the way, then obviously you can create a distribution package by hand and then use the AWS Lambda console to create your layer as well as to modify the lambdas. But if you're working on a real project for a client, then you really ought to take the plunge and get acquainted with this Terraform code that's in the repo. Speaking of, let's take a look at it right now. The whole module is only three resources, but there's a couple of things that I should point out. First, the null resource is kind of dumb when it comes to state management, and that's why I had to create all these file hashes to track the layer's source code. Ultimately, this is invoking the bash script that bundles everything together for us. Then the rest is really just this archive file command that creates the zip file, and then finally, the AWS Lambda layer version resource that puts everything together for us. If you trace the references to AWS Lambda layer version, then you can see that adding the layer to the two lambdas, it only takes one single line of code, and that's pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look inside the AWS console. This original Lambda OpenAI is part of a production deployment that's back in my own implementation of the ChatGPT React app, and it's now officially part of my portfolio, and so it is therefore mission critical. So I created this V2 alternative that runs alongside the original. This gives me a way to develop and test in peace without having to worry about any adverse effects to my mission critical React app. Recall that the original Lambda OpenAI does not use a layer, and it's unable to display the source code in the console editor due to size constraints. Also note that the original package size is 7.4 megabytes. Contrastingly, in the new v2 refactored version, it is using a layer, and we can see the source code, and the package itself is now only 1.8 kilobytes. You can also see that in my case, I'm on version 4 of the layer, and you can deduce a couple of things from this. First, it took me four attempts to get the layer right. But more importantly, this is a great platform management tool that you can rely on to gracefully fall back to a previous version if ever you deploy a layer that produces some janky post-deployment issue. Last thing, our new Lambda Langchain is also using the new layer, and so we're able to leverage the common validation code in here. And you'll recall that that was one of our other refactoring goals for today. Okay, let's talk about best practices for using AWS Lambda layers. First, make sure to version and publish your Lambda layers. This makes it easier to manage changes to your code and dependencies. If you're using the Terraform scripts in this repo, then it's already taken care of, but if not... <laughs> also, for creating and bundling your packages for your layer, make sure to use pip and a requirements.txt or npm with package.json as the case may be. I've also taken the extra step of packaging and versioning my common code, and that seems like a pretty good idea in general as well. Second, manage permissions for your Lambda layers carefully. You don't want to give too much access to your code or dependencies. My layer hasn't been granted any permissions at all, but you could add these. And if you do, then be mindful not to inadvertently give away the keys to the castle. And finally, test your Lambda layers. I'm actually testing my code three different ways. First, with PyTest locally in the development environment. And I've actually created unit tests in both Lambdas as well, so definitely check all that out. The AWS Lambda console, in addition, includes a helpful window tab where you can run tests, and you can copy and paste the JSON dict test data from the unit test, and you should get the same results when using this feature. And three, I created a new pass-through endpoint for the REST API in this project, and I added the endpoint to the Postman file that's in the repo. This gives me a way to see the Lambda being used as intended. This is the most thorough of the testing strategies, since it actually passes requests through the API itself, but I generally don't even bother with this until I can see the good results from PyTest and or the Lambda test console. Anyway, once you do get to this point, remember that this project also deploys CloudWatch logs for each of the Lambdas, and these are super helpful for troubleshooting purposes. Okay, so what are the trade-offs to adding layers to your Lambdas? Dry code. Multiple Lambdas can leverage the exact same supporting code, which is cleaner and it should lead to more predictable behavior and less problems in general, so that's good. Code reuse. My common code is now being used by two lambdas, and that's good. Improved version management of third-party code libraries. 
a fallback mechanism to previous layer versions in the event of post-deployment was. But there's more complexity. No matter how you look at it, you're adding another moving part to an already complex project, and so that's a bad thing. Testing is more challenging. It took me a lot longer than I expected to get the repo set up correctly so that the unit test would work, and that was tedious and not fun. Automating build deploy with Terraform becomes more complicated. My Terraform approach to the layers, it's kind of hacky, and it's probably going to take a while for that code to stabilize, and so that's a bad thing. And that's it. We've covered what AWS Lambda layers are, when to use them, and how to use them effectively. If you're interested in running serverless in the cloud, then AWS Lambda layers might be a great addition to your toolkit. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and I will see you in the next video.